All right, do me a favor. If you hear my voice okay and you uh, see the bright blue PowerPoint presentation, let me know. Raise your hand. We got some hands raised. Thank you, guys. So it looks like we're working. We are recording. We're ready to get started then. Uh, just as a reminder, as we go through this, please, uh, if you have any questions, send them in using the Q&A box. Um, don't send them in via chat or by raising your hand. Use the question and answer box in the Zoom interface. And should be ready to get started. Let's see. Okay, so um, we rolled out a new new features and updates into Nebula all the way back in like mid January. So we're just getting around now to doing a PowerPoint here to go through some of those new features and explain them to you. Um, I have not played around with all of these, so I'll do my best to answer any questions that come in. But uh, maybe something you need to email me and I need to check with Marcus or play around with it to get to the answer. Let's see. We've got some complaints on the uh, audio. I'm not in my normal room. Unfortunately, the FP team is um, doing a webinar at the same time as me today, and they're using the, the normal room. So I've moved the mic as close as I can. Hopefully that's a little bit better, Richard. Uh, if not, let me know. Um, so probably the biggest change that you're going to see um, has been that we've added a 31-day trial period. I'll try holding the phone up to my face. Maybe this will work instead of using the speakerphone. Um, so we've added a 31-day trial period that automatically gets applied and starts starts once you get going here. So um, it has caused a little confusion for people because this is something new that didn't used to be there. So one of the things that throws people off with this is that any sort of bundled Nebula points, so you know, if you buy an access point that comes with three years of Nebula or you um, – hold on a second. What's going on? I'm sorry, guys. This is going rougher than it normally should. That's really weird. Um, okay. Hopefully, hopefully it'll get a little bit smoother as we go through. Um, so anyways, your, your bundled Nebula points, so, you know, if you buy an access point that comes with one or three years of points or one of our switches or gateways, um, those bundled points don't necessarily show up until after the 30-day uh, trial is over. So that's caused some confusion for people because it'll show the points that you've added via iCard, but not any points that come bundled until after the trial period is expired. Um, so just be aware of that when you're checking the status that those points aren't going to show up until you uh, get past the trial period. And again, this is for the Pro Pack, so it'll drop back down to the free version if you don't add any points after the end of the trial period. So one of the new features we've got here is we've expanded the and added configuration templates. Um, we've already had some uh, template files on there. So what we've done is we've set up um, switch topologies. Um, so um, we can now set up a switch profile and uh, map things together. So um, – sorry. Uh, so this does require ProPack to get access to these features. So basically, you'll go in and you'll create a new site template. If you've already created one in the past, you can import your existing one um, or create a new one. You're then going to bind it to different sites. You'll choose which sites you want to bind to. Um, those sites do have to be under the same organization. So if you've got a customer with five or ten sites, you would go in and bind them to however many sites you want to use this template to use. Um, and then once you've done that, you can go in there and um, start configuring the template, and any changes you make to that template will be pushed out to the sites that are bound to it. So you can see here we can set up switch profiles um, for individual switches on a per model basis. So um, you know your MSW switches might be set up differently than your um, GS uh, you know 1920 V2 switches. So this is just showing you here, walking you through the steps here. You can see, you know, you go under uh, switch configure, switch configure, and then um, templates. Oops. There we go. Um, click on create. And it'll let you know, you know, do you want to create new? Do you want to take from a profile? You name it. Choose which models you want to apply, which model you want it to be for. 
you bind it to the sites, and away we go. So we can also do a local override, so you can choose individual ports and choose to override the template and use local configuration if you've overridden it. Okay, remote access. So something people have been asking for for a while is we've made it, uh, we've opened up the CLI commands. So if you want to send CLI commands or use CLI commands to play with things, we now support that through Nebula. Um, basically, you go in, you turn it on. It's only going to work for whoever owns the site. So whichever account created the site um, initially is the one, or the organization is the one who has, whose credentials have to be used to log in. You'll use SSH to remote into the device itself. Um, so you can see there in the bottom, you go in um, under Live Tools, go to Remote Access, um, and choose to enable it in which port you want to use, and it'll show you the IP address to use. Um, so this right now works on all of the NSG models and all of our access points except for the MAP-102 and the NWA 1123. It does not yet work on our switches. But for those of you that like command line interfaces, you've now got access to that for the APs and the gateways. So now we'll move on and start talking about access points specifically. Um, so we've got a number of minor enhancements. I'm going to go over each one of these just because I know there's probably one person out there that wants to learn more about uh, each of these or has been waiting for this feature to come on through. So um, on Captive Portal, we've got the ability to choose every 12 hours to re-authenticate users that are logged in through a Captive Portal. Um, Radius, you now can use a domain name instead of an IP address. Um, to point to your RADIUS server. Um, if we're doing MAC-based authentication, you can set a disconnection policy. Uh, we've improved the way that you can monitor clients and the way the information is displayed on the screen. Um, all of our access points now, or all of the existing access points that have been out there now support Smart Mesh. Previously, the uh, Wave 2 access points did not, but that has been fixed. Um, we can now set Captive Portal timeout based on radius attribute. So that way you can set different timeouts for different users. Um, we have the ability now to blacklist DFS channels. So if you're using DFS and we detect radar on a certain channel, we can automatically pull that out of the list of channels that the access point can use. So you don't end up with uh, repeated, repeatedly getting on that channel and then falling off. Um, and, and guys, just to get it right, if you have any questions, um, send them in through Q&A. Um, don't send them in through chat or raising your hand. I'm seeing things flashing up there, which I think are probably people chatting. I don't, I don't have enough screen space for all those different windows to open up. Um, so we've now got a little bit wider range that you can choose for uh, station signal threshold before we start doing uh, uh, before we uh, kick you off doing smart steering. Okay, so Tony's got a question asking, can you show me uh, Mac-based authentication? I, I don't. I don't have a demo opened up here today. Um, but that is something you set under, um, I believe it is guest access, and you set it up. Um, where did you set it up? I don't know if that made it. So send me an email. It's, uh, my email is seanr at zicel.com. Um, and I'll, I'll have that at the end slide here. But go ahead and send me an email that question, and I'll, I'll, I'll look up and get the answer for you and email you back. Continuing on, so we've enhanced the live tool that you can use when looking at the access points to show you just the connected clients. And we have the ability to show that over time. So every 10 seconds, we record who was connected when. So you can go through and see who was connected, and when they fell off, when they got back on. So um, another thing you may have seen, HQ got a little ahead of themselves, is Wi-Fi 6 access points. We currently have the WAC 650S, which is available now. It's our high-end model. It's a 4x4 Wave 6. It's got a dedicated third radio for doing channel monitoring and other stuff. It also supports Bluetooth. Um, and then coming down the pike here, we've got two new models, two lower-end models, um, the WAC 510D and the NWA 110AX. So those are coming. They were supposed to be here uh, right about now. Um, I think Europe is launching them next month. However, the U.S. compatible version of these products has been delayed thanks to the coronavirus. 
Um, so right now, I think we're probably looking at June, um, possibly May, but it, it really depends on the factory and when the factory gets opened up and gets around to producing these for us. So all these new models are coming soon. Um, another big enhancement now is WPA3. So WPA3 support is only going to be on the Wi-Fi 6 access points. The older access points don't have the hardware that's required to support WPA3 um, without overwhelming the CPU. So one of the cool features that WPA3 does is you can now have um, in, uh, encryption even without a passkey. So if you have a hotspot, guest access, something like that, where you don't want to use a pre-shared key to control access to it, you can open it up, but each client will then negotiate with the access point its own uh, one-time key and use that for encryption. So even though there's no pass key required, each user's information is encrypted to prevent sniffers from being able to see it. So that's something kind of cool we can do. We can, of course, do WPA3 with a pre-shared key, just like with WPA2. And then if you use radius authentication, 802.1x, you can do that too with WPA3. Um, basically, it's stronger encryption than WPA2, and it can transition back. So if you set it to use WPA3, older devices which don't support WPA3 will still be able to connect using WPA2. So this is just showing here the uh, wireless health report, which has been there for a while now in Nebula. Um, basically, it plots over time. Um, which clients are having connectivity issues, or having to do read transmits. So we've now added the ability to filter things in here so you can filter by AP or filter by client to make it easier so you're not overwhelmed with all your, on the bigger sites. So also coming here is AP mode, power mode. So some of our X, I don't know why I'm moving through, there we go. Um, so you know, some of our access points, um, the new uh, Wi-Fi 6 access point requires 802.3 BT power. Some of our other APs require 802.3 AT. Um, but realistically, their power demands most of the time are well below um, the actual needing to be that level of PoE support. Um, I think like our NAP 203s technically draw less than 15 watts. Um, however, when they first boot up, um, it, it can cause problems with some switches, so that's why we specify it requires AT. BT is similar to that. So um, we've now got the ability, and so when you encounter those situations where the switch doesn't provide enough power, they slow themselves down and operate at reduced speeds, but still will boot up and function. So we've now got ability to go in there and override that and tell them to operate at full speed, full power, even if the in theory, aren't connected to a powerful enough uh, switch to provide that power. So you do now have the ability to override the, the reduced speed mode um, and just be aware that if you do do this, there may be issues with stability, there may be issues with the AP going offline. It really depends on what's going on with the AP and which switch it's connected to. So uh, with the Wi-Fi 6 um, access point now with this dedicated uh, monitoring um, functionality here, uh, we now have the ability to monitor the environment. So we've got a new report which can show you channel utilization um, and it takes a look at both Wi-Fi and non-Wi-Fi use of that frequency to let you know what's going on. Um, I think this works still with the, uh, the older models, the uh, 11AC products. Um, it may not be quite as accurate as with the Wi-Fi 6 AP. So we've made some enhancements to how we do the load balancing. Um, you can set in there now on a per radio basis how many clients each access point you want to, uh, or each radio in the access point you want it to support. We've also now added something people have been asking for for a while now, which is load balancing groups. This is something our controllers have offered for a while, but if you were using Nebula and you were doing load balancing, it automatically load balanced between all access points that were on that site. So not ideal, especially in larger environments like hotels and things like that, where you don't need um, you know, an access point in a guest room trying to load balance with the access point out by the pool. Um, so now we've got the ability to go in and group the APs into groups and then load balancing will just be between those APs in the same group. So you can do it by floor or region or thing like that. So something people have been looking for. Um, the big benefit on this is a little bit more accurate, 
load balancing. We also had situations in larger sites where we had maybe 150, 200 access points where there was so much communication since all the APs were trying to communicate with each other simultaneously just for load balancing um, that it was eating up a lot of bandwidth on the, on the network. So we've now got the ability here um, to set re-authentication time limit based on individual SSID. Um, so if you have multiple SSIDs doing captive portal, in the past, past there was only one setting for the re-auth time. So now you can set re-auth based on individual SSIDs. Whoops. So now we can set up client policies, again, based on SSID. Before, it was just applied to all SSIDs. You can now set it just to apply to certain SSIDs. So you can specifically blacklist people from, say, uh, hotel staff network um, to make sure guests aren't getting online to that network or hacking the uh, SSID. So you can set that up there. And we've now added another feature here, which has been part of our uh, controller-based networking which is the ability to use, um, to do a dynamic VLAN assignment. Um, so basically you've got one SSID, and then when wireless users connect, um, they can be assigned individual, SSI, or individual VLANs. So this way you can use less SSID. It's a little bit more efficient for the Wi-Fi there. It does require the ProPack. This is showing you here where you go ahead and set it up. So you do need to have authentication enabled, um, and that's where you would go in to assign the VLAN for each individual user. We've also added um, Ethernet storm control. So the AP can be set to automatically drop uh, ingress packets once they exceed a certain amount. Um, so you can see their multicache threshold is 100 packets per second. Broadcast, thresh, broadcast threshold is 100 packets per second. So th this is beneficial. This is something you can turn on. It's not on by default. You would need to turn this on. Um, but we run into situations where people aren't using VLANs and they're doing lots of different traffic and sometimes the multicast just gets kind of crazy and overwhelms the wireless network. And it's packets that don't need to be going to the wireless users. The other thing we've done here is if you're using an external uh, URL um, to host your uh, to host your captive portal page to add additional features to what information is being captured. Um, we now have the ability to go in and edit which information is appended to the URL um, so you can choose exactly how that is uh, identified. Probably something none of you are ever going to use. Um, so now we'll move on to switches. So we've got a new switch coming. It's not here yet. It's the XS 1930 series. So all ports are, shoot, all ports are 10 gig. And on the PoE model, those PoE ports support PoE up to 802.3BT. So if you're deploying lots of the WAC 650S, um, this is a switch you need so you don't have to do one, uh, one GS1350 per each AP. You can do one switch to multiple APs. Um, we do have a small number of these available today. Um, if you need to get a sample to test it out, reach out to your salesperson, Sandra, Jacob, or Ivan, and they can arrange for you to get a demo unit to play with. I'm not sure the exact date when these will be available. Again, everything is kind of pushed back and sort of mushy as far as the timelines go due to the coronavirus and the effect it's having both on stuff made in China and even stuff made in Taiwan or Vietnam just because a lot of the components are coming from China. So it's, it's slowing things down even if you're, we're making it in countries that aren't China. So just showing here we support 802.3 BT. We've got a 375 watt power budget with BT you reserve 60 watts per device. So we've enhanced the ability here for VLAN control. Um, so you can actually put in a range of ports um, easily and then um, on the switch here. So we've also got the ability now to assign VLAN tags based on the vendor ID, the OUI, which is generally your, your MAC address or the first several digits of the MAC address. So if you're deploying, say, uh, IP phones, they're all coming from one vendor probably the first you know, six digits of that are the same across all of them. So you can auto plug in those six digits um, into the OID filter here, and it'll automatically assign the voice VLAN to them. So you don't have to do it on a port basis. 
um, or things like that. So IP filtering now supports both uh, source and destination MAC address, something that was missing before. So when it comes to uh, switch local, uh, uh, how am I want to say this here? So basically you can define the IP ranges of certain client devices, which will restrict them to the management services such as FTP, Telnet, SSH, et cetera. So under the advanced IGMP, something that's been there for a while, we've now added the ability uh, to determine on a VLAN basis uh, to drop multicast traffic. So you can set up to 16 different VLANs um, and do it that way. So it'll automatically drop multicast packets if there's no IGMP join uh, signal sent. So most, mostly for anybody that's doing IPTV. So we've enhanced the IPTV reporting page here. Um, give you the ability here to download the channel list, um, import records into the system here. Again, something probably most of you aren't using that much. So on to gateways. So we've increased the entry limits for different features. So you can see here across each model, um, DHCP static IP addresses, policy routes, outbound rules, all of those have been upgraded across the board, across all of the products here. So we've added a field in there so you can see um, when IDP and antivirus signatures were last updated. I don't believe that information was previously viewable in Nebula. We have added a SIP ALG. We had been missing that. Most people don't like using it though, so, but it is there now if you do want it. So we now have link aggregation on the NSG 300. So that allows you to combine one or more ports to behave as a single port to help boost up your bandwidth. So we've got the ability to set it up as active backup. So um, there's a primary port and data doesn't go over the other ports until that main port goes down for some reason. Uh, we've got the ability to um, load balance across all of the ports that are part of that lag group. And we've got the ability to use 802.3 AD. We've added the ability to put VLAN tags on the WAN port, um, something we're seeing more and more requests um, from ISPs to be able to do, um, especially those delivering uh, triple play services. So that's been added. So that is it. That's a quick overview of all of those features. Um, if you have any questions, send them in right now through the Q&A box. My email is up there on the screen, so if there's any technical questions or something like that question earlier where I, I don't have the answer off the top of my head and probably need to go in and take some screenshots for you, just email me um, and I should see those, um, provided they don't get lost in one of our many spam filters, um, and I'll reply back with all the information you need. Also for everybody out there, if you aren't familiar with it, we do have a message forum, forum.zicel.com. Um, our R&D team in Taiwan does read that message board, and they do um, answer questions on there. So it's not just user to user. It is a place where you can get official support from people. So I um, just wanted to make sure you're aware of that so you can take advantage of it. Um, this is being recorded, so this is going to show up on our uh, Zycel America channel on YouTube. If you just go to YouTube, type in Zycel America channel, it'll come up. Um, so this will be posted up there within the next 24 hours. If you want a copy of the slides themselves, reach out to your salesperson, um, Sandy, Jacob, or Ivan, and we will be able to send you a PDF version of this. Um, so while I wait to see if anyone's working on any questions, I just want to thank you guys for turning out today. Um, also, we're always looking for ideas for topics for feedback on the, pre, on the presentations we're giving. I know today's was a little rough. Like I said, I, I haven't actually played around with a lot of these features yet. Um, but give us feedback. Let us know. We want these to be valuable for you. You're obviously taking up you know, 30 minutes or an hour of your day's time to listen in, um, depending on the presentation. So we want to make sure you're getting some value for it. So let us know if you have any ideas for other topics, for things you'd like to see either myself, Try or Marcus cover in the future. Let us know. We absolutely listen to that feedback and do our best to try to uh, add new presentations based on that feedback. Okay, no new questions have come in, so I'm going to go ahead and end today's presentation. 
Um, so go ahead and um, it's weird. Go ahead and uh, if you're typing something, highlight it, uh, copy it, and then send me an email. Sean R. S H A W N R at Dicel.com. Thanks, everybody.